Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, latest ISE webinar. Uh, my name is Stephen Kinsella. I'm the co-director of the Immersive Software Engineering uh, degree here at the University of Limerick. Um, we have a very interesting and uh, topical um, webinar for you today. For the next two hours, we're going to be talking about the portfolio. So to give you a sense of, of what this degree is, um, you know, this is a four year master's where you will spend 50 percent of your time in um, in some of the best companies in the world and you'll also be immersed in a new kind of learning. Um, it's very innovative. It's very interesting. And we are going to um, take you through um, one of the innovative parts of this program, particularly uh, the portfolio. So why are we doing this? Why are we doing the portfolio as an idea? Well, the answer is we want to assess things that we don't believe the Leaving Cert can assess, particularly how you describe and how you understand your achievements and what your creativity uh, levels are and what how you can apply those things. Um, particularly to the field of technology. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass over to my uh, co-director, uh, Professor Tiziana Margaria, who will give you a sense of like what skills and traits we're looking for and then um, maybe uh, lead you on. We're going to have a packed day. We've got a guest uh, a speaker, uh, Provisio's uh, CEO and founder, Barry Lunn, will be talking to us. We'll be talking to Rob Heaton from Stripe. We'll be talking to our head of residencies, JJ Collins. We'll be talking to uh, Dr. Ian O'Keefe. Um, uh, our, our senior fellow and industry coordinator and um, we'll come back uh, myself and we'll moderate questions uh, that you may have. So it's going to be uh, fast, it's going to be uh, information packed and we hope you get the most out of the day. So with that, uh, let me pass over to uh, my colleague and my uh, co-director, uh, Professor Margaria. OK, thank you, Stephen. Uh, great to, uh, to have this opportunity to meet you all. Uh, in this uh, specific uh, um, uh, occasion dedicated in particular to the portfolios, but to any other Q&A that you also may have. Um, you may have already heard from our uh, previous presentation what kind of profile of uh, uh, students uh, would be the most successful in this ISE um, uh, uh, course of study. Well, just in order to repeat it and make sure that we are aligned, um, we look for people that are curious, that would like to solve problems, uh, that have demonstrated engagement and initiative, that are able to uh, work with others, and that they are interested actually in discovering. It is going to be a challenge-based, problem-based uh, education in the studio, and therefore we need actually to make sure that if you are accepted in this course, you are going to be happy from before day one, to the rest of your life. And that's exactly why uh, we have introdu introduced the portfolio as an additional uh, means, uh, not just of selection. It is actually a means uh, in order to get you to present yourself to us, get us to know what who you are and what you are uh, passionate about. And uh, um, this way, basically make sure that you are going to have the best experience in the in the course. OK, um, we are not the only ones that think that this is important. There are also the other guests um, in today's um, in today's event. So I will just cut it short at this point and basically hand over to our first uh, invited speaker, who is Barry Lunn. As uh, Stephen already said, he is a founder of Provisio and he is a really uh, fantastically um, uh, a champion, OK, of, uh, uh, you know, engagement uh, in particular with schools and in particular with uh, with the transition, so to say, from high school uh, to into uh, university level courses. So Barry, the field is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Margaria. I really appreciate it. And, and Stephen, and how do, how do I follow that intro? Um, well, I, I, I suppose the reason I was I was I was brought here today is like I really believe in portfolios like I've been an advocate and an ambassador for portfolios and have had my own portfolio 
that I cultivate consistently for the last 30 years. So that gives you an idea of how long I'm I'm around. And 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 the reason um, I'm so passionate about it is, is especially in the in, in where we are now in today's world, especially in software engineering, it's not about what you you know what's in in paper and what you you could do or what. Show me what you've done. What are your capabilities? And that's why portfolios are so important and why I, I feel so strongly about them. So I suppose I come from two sides. My uh, my day job, I'm I'm um, founder and CEO of Provisio, and we're, we're a, a crash prevention technology. We're building software and sensors that go on every vehicle in the world eventually and will stop the carnage on our roads, but eventually lead to full autonomy as well. So it's it's pretty exciting stuff and it's it, 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 it's very interesting. So there's kind of two sides to that. I, I, I see portfolios in, we we develop our portfolio of product and our what we demonstrate on a daily basis so that we can show the world what we're capable of but then people that want to come work with us, right? We want to work with the best engineers in the world, right? That's why we're aligned with this program. That's why we we love what, what the guys are building here is because we want to work with engineers that want to build something, that want to change the world, right? That that That's really important to us. And the only way we can see that is if we see their their portfolio. So I'm I'm going to share my screen now, if, if that's OK, guys. And I'm just going to uh, show a, a couple of slides and um, make it as... As, as plain as possible, because I'm a, I'm a visual creature, right? And when I said I, I've had a portfolio for the, for the last 30 years, that's because I wanted to go to art college. I wanted to, to, to get into that world and that world forced me to create a portfolio. But I very quickly realized that a portfolio isn't about getting into a course. And that's not the way you should look at the portfolio here today. You should look at the portfolio as this is going to create a method of development over the over the rest of your life of, of how you present yourself. And this is why, right? An application, a resume, a CV, it's black and white. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't represent you. We are multidimensional beings, right? We, we, and employers, uh, professors, whoever you meet in life, want to see the 3D you. They don't want to see the black and white you. It doesn't represent you, right? And this is how I think of portfolios, right? That that portfolios are the, the multi-dimensional version of you. They're colorful, they've got dimension and they've got all that. And always think of the fact that you're going to develop a portfolio to get into this course, but you're also going to cultivate it through the course and bring it with you through life. And that's going to be a massive advantage that you will have over over anyone else. I've always seen the, the fact that I had a portfolio um, as and I was always happy to hide behind my portfolio. Almost this is I don't I don't have to over talk it. And this is why this is what the world looks like. This is what a sea of applicants looks like. Right. We put up a, a job posting for, you know, a, a artificial intelligence, machine learning engineer in, the, in an autonomous vehicle space. Right. A lot of people want to do that, right? But who do I see? It's the the girl or the guy with the portfolio that that out of this sea of black and white, I've got color, I've got dimension. Who do you think I'm going to look to first? Where am I excited? It's there. And that's what your portfolio is going to do. It bursts off the page. I can see that person before I ever meet them. And, and obviously then we go from there. And so I'll kind of leave you with one thing. We, we, we've already started this process. We're already working with the University of Limerick, uh, the AIML, uh, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Master students. We've had a couple of interns join us from there, right? And now we're part of their portfolio. So I'm going to show you a, a quick snippet of what a day in the life, and there's more up on the website, but just like Eddie, Eddie and Kevin joined us last summer, right? And, and if I talk about Kevin first, Right. Kevin, Kevin sent me an email and he just said, uh, I love what you're doing. Here's what I've done. And it was a link and I clicked the link and I knew everything I ever needed to know about Kevin because it was a link to his portfolio. This guy had built his own car, for God's sake. He, he had done some incredible stuff. 
I didn't care whether he was pink, blue or what planet he lived on. He was coming with us for the summer and he's still with us, right? These guys, they're going back to college to do their degree. They don't work in the bar anymore or work in the furniture store. They work with us. Any hour they have, we'll take it and, 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 and take them on. And similarly with Eddie, Eddie's now portfolio includes having deployed algorithms with a, with a company like Provisio, right? That, that on the vehicle that he can show in the future to potential employees, well, obviously we just want him to stay with us for the rest of his life, but that, that's not reality. But he now has that in, in his arsenal. And so the next 30 second video that I'm gonna show you, that's Eddie's portfolio leaving us. That's just one part of it. And, and that's what, and he's now as well as part of that, he, he was shortlisted for an AI Ireland Award for artificial intelligence. At, you know, in the early 20s, um, in, in his third year of, of university. And that's what you guys are gonna be doing, right? And that's why we want you to have these amazing portfolios. We obviously want to see them and be able to pick the ones that we really want to come and join us in Provisio. And, and this is the kind of cool stuff you'll get to work on, right? Okay, so that's that's me, and I suppose if you if you take anything from what I'm what I'm saying today is that video, that's what your portfolio will look and feel like. That's what you will jump out of the page at future employees, just like everybody else. And I, that's why I'm so excited about working with with people on this course. I'm going to hand over now to to Rob Heaton from Stripe. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, hi, my name's Rob. Uh, I'm a, in my day job. I'm a cybersecurity software engineer uh, at Stripe, which is a, a payments company which was founded by two Irish brothers. And I've also been helping develop the IIC course. And I'm here today to describe and talk about the first question on the IIC portfolio. I'm just going to share my screen as well. Let's see if this works. Right. OK, can we see that? I think we can. All right, um, I'm going to assume this is working. Let me know and stop me if it is not. Uh, so the first question that uh, on the portfolio, the first question out of two is question one. Tell us about the most creative, interesting or enjoyable way in which you've used technology. So I'm going to explain why we're asking this question, talk about some projects that you could write about, and then a couple of ways in which you could tell us about them. How you, could you write us about them? So you'll probably notice that the scope of this question is, is very broad um, in several ways. And honestly, by this question, what we really mean is uh, something closer to tell us just about the coolest way in which you've used technology. But we didn't really think that we could use that word cool in an official academic document. And so this broadness, this massive scope might feel intimidating at first, but I would encourage you to think of it as a chance to, to choose what you think that you find really, truly interesting, rather than just filling in a couple of boring blanks that someone else chose. So the types of projects that you can tell us about is really wide, and we're not just interested in coding and programming. Um, technology, it's, it's a wide field and it's getting even wider every single year. And so if you've done some coding before that you think was cool and interesting, then please, yes, definitely tell us about that. But if you've never coded before, never done any programming, then that's fine too. Tell us about something else that you've done uh, instead. And we'll talk more about these possible types of product project in uh, a second. And then we've also, uh, as well as being giving you the scope to write about a broad range of things, um, we also give you the scope to write about things in a wide range of ways and write about a wide range of different aspects. Um, and this is deliberate because all projects are different and they all have different interesting spikes and interesting points to them. So there's no point us demanding that you tell us about all of the real world users of your project 
if it was just something that you did for yourself, for your own interest, that's fine. It's great to do things for your own interest. So in, we'll give you some suggestions for the parts of your project that you might want to talk about and the ways in which you might want to talk about them. But again, you can choose whichever ways you think are the most interesting to you. So let's talk about some examples and we'll talk about the possible examples of what you did and where you did it and thirdly, why you did it. So first, what you did. And remember, these are all just examples um, and they're all available on our, on our website. So you don't need to worry about writing these down or anything like that. So what you could write about, again, if you've written a program before that you thought was cool and interesting, then brilliant. Tell us about that. Um, you might want to tell us about a piece of art or music that you produced using computers, using technology, or maybe you wrote a smartphone app, or perhaps you wrote a, you installed a smart home system and you customized it, made, customized it and made it made it fantastic. You might have used, written, built something with hardware like electronics and um, piecing together, things like that. You might have done some data analysis for, for science or business and anything like that. And that might have been using a spreadsheet or you might build a website or a shop or a forum or something like that. Or it might just be something else completely different that we haven't even mentioned or thought about here. Again, it's just what, whatever you think. Uh, so then secondly, some examples of where you might have done it. Um, you might have done it at some work experience. You might have just done it at home on your own for fun. You just thought this is something cool. This is something interesting. I just want to learn more about this and build something. You might have done it at a club of some sort. You might have done it just with some friends, again, just for fun. You might have done it as part of a competition, such as the, a programming Olympiad, uh, text, which was a recent uh, technology competition, or the BT Young Scientist. You might have done it as uh, a part of some sort of externally organized program, or again, just somewhere else completely different that we haven't even thought of. And then finally, why you did it, like what, what was the topic that you were looking at? It could have been, again, just some examples. You could have been analysing some language. You could have been sort of combining both technology and the arts in that way. You could have been analysing diet sometime or, or trying to understand a sports team's performance, like what makes them win, what makes them lose. You might have been drilling further into a science experiment of some sort. Perhaps it was just for fun, like there was there was no point. You just thought this would be cool. I want to learn about it. You might have been building a mod for a, a computer game. You might have been helping a business or a charity or anything like that. You might have been using technology to produce uh, a piece of a piece of art or fashion or again, just something else completely different that we haven't contemplated. So let's uh, let's say that you're, you're trying to think of something, something else. What, what makes a good project? Again, just these are just suggestions. It might have been something where you encountered problems along the way, because often the problems and the challenges, they're the most interesting bits. And that's where you that's where you really learn. That's where you can can really show us what you're capable of. The bigger and more complex the project was, probably the more interesting it was, um, the more different aspects are useful to write about. Perhaps the project was particularly unique in some way. You had to, you thought of it yourself, you developed it uh, and conceived of it yourself. Or perhaps you had several alternative ways of doing something and you had to make the trade-offs. You had to choose, it wasn't obvious. Perhaps you automated something. We're talking technology here, so probably some automation was involved. Uh, perhaps the project was used by other people and you had to work with them to get feedback and make it better and constantly iterate on things. Again, it doesn't matter if it wasn't. It's just if it was, that could be useful and interesting. And again, just where you somewhere where you might have learned something new. Um, it's generally not that not as interesting to just take something you know how to do and just do it. If you find something difficult and you have to learn something new, that's that's generally the sign of something interesting. So now let's say you've, you've found you found a project. It's something that you've done in the past or something that, that you do in uh, in the future. How 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 are you going to write about that? How are you going to tell us about it? Um, and as I said before, there are lots of different aspects that might be interesting. And again, you can choose the aspects that you think are most appropriate and interesting. So I've got a couple of suggested questions. Uh, you could choose a couple of them. Do not answer all of them. There's so many of them uh, and you couldn't possibly fit them all in in any particularly useful way. So first, and I think you, you'll want to include an overview of rough of what you did. What what did you do? What was it? Why? Uh, then you might want to talk about the the impact, the consequences uh, of what you did. So why did you do it? Were you solving a problem that you wanted to to solve in the real world? Did you just want to learn something? Was it just for fun? And then what was the impact of your project? Uh, if someone used it, how did it help them? And then what aspect of it, like either the process of making it or the um, impact that it had in the real world. What aspect are you most proud of? Again, challenges are interesting. They're not, they're nothing to be scared of. 
So if you came across any challenges, did you get feedback from people who used your work? And did they mean that you changed your plans? People said, I like this, don't like that. And you went back to the drawing board and fiddled with things. And then if you did, what was the biggest challenge that you encountered? What happened? What caused it? Perhaps you learned something like what did you learn during your project? And if you did it again, what would you do uh, differently the next time? So that's that's an overview of question one, which again, tell us about the most creative, interesting or enjoyable way in which you've used technology. Um, and if you have an idea that you're not you're not sure if it's appropriate to write about, it probably is. Uh, and you can email us to check uh, our web. Our email address is on is on the website, and we can let you know if it's appropriate. So I think I think I hope that this is a fun a fun thing to write about, a fun thing to uh, to dig into. And so now I'm going to hand over to JJ Collins to give some further examples, just some more in-depth examples of projects that you might look at uh, for this question. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for that, Rob. And just to recap, what. Uh, the takeaway message for me from Barry is that the portfolio um, it effectively becomes you so it's your alter ego and it's something to work on and cultivate it's a living artifact and it speaks to you about you and for you and then from Rob I think Rob emphasized creativity innovation etc rather than the emphasis on technology so the technology is a vehicle for us to realize um, our objective. So briefly, my name is JJ Collins, Immersive Software Engineering Head of Residencies. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science and Information Systems at UL. I lecture, I prefer to use the word mentor subjects such as software architecture and deep learning, and my research is within that area. So I'm going to give a few examples. I share my screen. OK, so I'm going to focus on websites. And again, just to emphasize that um, the emphasis should be on creativity, the value for the end users, irrespective of whether they're actual end users or virtual end users. And just to keep in mind that a website is a window into your innovation. And as Barry said, you know, you know the diagram there on the right, there are thousands of millions of websites. And what in your um, design and maybe subsequent implementation will stand out? And it comes back to innovation. Also to think about the process. So a website or any software artifact, it's a product. What are the requirements? How did you capture them? Then moving on to design and subsequent implementation where you build, you might have built some or all of the application and then testing and evaluation. And again to stress, it's not necessarily the case that you've followed all these steps. But maybe that where you have embarked upon them, you know, there's creativity, innovation within a systematic and rigorous framework. Also for websites, just to be cognizant of Web 1.0, which is static. You present some information to end users versus Web 2.0 interactive, and then you allow them to be a source of input, etc. And that input then modifies the, uh, the results that are displayed back. Some of the examples that I'm going to show will be from text. This is our old competition, our competition in conjunction with Patch from BT Young Scientist, etc. And if you go to their websites and do a search, you'll get examples. So here, first example that caught my attention from BT Young Scientist, Raspberry Pi powered internet connected pill dispenser. And that's in the context of supporting the elderly to live independently at home. It uses a Raspberry Pi computer, a small, a small computer. This is uh, an example of a project where there's a lot of emphasis on hardware and easy to use website for the doctor possibly to view what medication has been um, dispensed today and maybe to modify the prescription. So again, the website becomes a, a, sh a shop window to um, illustrate what's happening. Second example, the ISC website and on the right there we have an example, a screenshot from that. And again, with the ISC website, there's a number of requirements, but one of them was that um, we had to get this website up and uh, published as quickly as possible as a means of communicating our message and connecting to you, the key stakeholders. When it comes to developing websites, there's a number of different technology options available and WordPress where it does all the heavy lifting for you. Um, an example almost of a low code environment for developing uh, websites, Drupal. This is a framework that provides a set of highly configurable templates. And then the third option is to make it yourself. And I cover briefly all of all of these. And by the way, we have no preference of one over the other. Again, to stress creativity, innovation, and how you step back and evaluate, or sorry, document the design process, 
or the, and then stepping back and evaluating the work done. Before I get on to talking about websites, another example from BT Young site is Cara, an approach to stop bullying. This is a website that helps teenagers get advice on how to tackle bullying if they don't have anyone to talk to. And back to the uh, technology. So when you're developing a website, you have to consider the front end or the user interface. This is what the end users see. And in doing this, to consider, have you developed UI prototypes? Maybe even a few wireframes in the diagram on the right there is an example of a wireframe, and you might consider it as a sketch of what is uh, a web page will look like. And in sketching this, or in developing a website, you can think about graphics. So if you look at immersive software engineering, the graphics communicate our ethos, our culture, etc. The aesthetics, the color coding scheme, um, how the colors blend together to provide a look and feel that is attractive and gains the audience attention and usability. Issues such as um, navigability, is there a linear presentation of the information with the use of breadcrumbs that allow people to quickly go back or find where they need to get to. This is typically done using um, HTML and CSS and maybe some JavaScript based language as well for supporting the development. But again, the emphasis is not on implementation. If you have an imp implementation, great. We're happy to hear about it, but creativity and then the design process. Another example of a website, and this again from BT Young Scientist, example four here. Is technology the way forward for education? And in this particular student who said he or she set up a junior cert website in order to help their students. I haven't looked into this, but I imagine it would be the provision of uh, notes as as supported by the teacher, and maybe past exam papers, suggested solutions, etc. And then what's really important, we'll investigate whether their grades have improved or disproved through the provision of this support via a website. Just continuing on with the technology briefly, uh, web architecture in the context of make it yourself, the diagram the right there captures that. We have users and then they're looking at on a browser information being displayed and also providing uh, data. So the front end implemented their HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then we have the back end or the server side. And maybe for some of you, you have a file system that could contain images, or you have a database and you're collecting data um, and um, you're using that in the application. Up above that, we have the web server and examples of scripting languages, PHP, JavaScript, the BASP.NET, etc. Or you might be even using frameworks such as uh, Django in the context of Python, or it might be uh, microservices such as Spring, MVC for Java, etc. So if you're using any of these particular technologies and in a, a make it yourself context, tell us about the frameworks that you've explored, even when not used. Tell us about those frameworks you've tried to use and you ran into problems. So we're interested in hearing about your story. So let's move on to more examples. A mobile app, so example five, a design for an app for visitors exploring Limerick City by bicycle. So what are the safe cycling routes? Um, and what are the tourist sites of interest? A bit of history or a, bit, a short story for each of those sites. And then maybe um, optimal uh, navigation. What's the shortest route from point A to point B in the context of this historical tour? You might even consider building some aspects of the app, but you don't have to. And if you're going looking at that, then technologies that you might use, app builders, for example, Flutter, they do a lot of the heavy uh, lifting for you, but you might also have an interest in having a look underneath the hood from an implementation perspective. So you might consider coding one or two screens directly using Android Studio or Swift for iOS, etc. Next example, spreadsheets. And Rob talked about this and Ian also. And I just do a deeper dive into dietary analysis. So if you can, might consider capturing and coding food diary entries in a spreadsheet, could be Excel, etc. for a secondary school cohort, for example, uh, the friends in your class, and extract, extracting dietary data using public nutrition databases. So again, the fundamental question is, um, are you eating a healthy diet? And in the context of your friends, your network of friends, where where are you placed or where are you ranked, etc. And what are the dietary habits of that particular cohort? We understand 
as a society, how important this is, and maybe to start looking at it within our own network initially. Um, when doing this, you need to consider issues such as cleaning the data. So um, your friends are supplying data to you, are there outliers, there might be missing values, there might be values that are, um, there's errors, etc. Then what information are you going to produce from this data set? So what's the median, what's the deviation? And also what I've said here is um, with nutritional databases, they give you everything from sodium, potassium to cal or calories, etc. What are you going to present without causing information overload? Compare the results that you get with peer reviewed published results. What are the next steps if you were to take this work forward? And also um, for those of you who are interested in this area, to look up data sets in Kaggle and they also contain sample AI machine learning sample codes. The diagram there on the right, this just um, illustrates, it's a screenshot from an Android project developed by our students. And in that they're using artificial intelligence and machine learning number one to identify the food types in the image, which is intuitive to us, it's an apple. And also the thumb is there necessary to estimate quantity. And once we have that information, then they can interrogate the public nutritional databases. More examples, maybe uh, games. I have to confess that I'm not a gamer myself, but I think they do serve a useful purpose, not only in the entertainment sector, but also we see games now being used widely within the health sector, for example, for stroke rehabilitation. So you might have designed a game for fun. It could be a series of clues to be solved, or it could be a traditional combat type game. And to consider what we like to hear in the story, what, do you, what were the objectives? Did you storyboard the game as part of the design process? Have you done some any work in UI prototyping using wireframes? Might even implement some screens using, for example, it might be uh, Scratch or Corona or Unity, Unity engines, etc. And then when you step back and reflect upon the quality of the work you've done, how do you evaluate that work? So these are some examples. Just to stress, we're not being overly prescriptive because we want you to tell your story, to express yourself and to do so without uh, very descriptive guidelines. So with that, I'm going to hand back. Um, my name is Ian and I'm part of the IC team here in UL. I'm just going to share a presentation myself now here. Hopefully you can all see that. So um, we have had many people asking us if coding is a requirement for the portfolio. And, and JJ was going to cover examples that were covering that uh, coding. But what I'm going to follow up with now is saying if you do not have coding experience, you know, do not worry, as there are many other technology areas you can present that demonstrate the capabilities we're looking for in ISE. And we're going to look at a few examples now. And we don't want to be too prescriptive on the details of what we're looking for, as this is your opportunity to express your uniqueness your technical abilities, your innovation, and how you can combine these to solve a problem. It's a bit like someone telling you to be spontaneous. It completely kills off the inventiveness. You can't force it, so we want you all to explore all the things you really enjoy doing, see if any of them have a technology aspect to it, and then pick the one you feel best showcases, your own unique qualities that make you a great fit for the IC program. First, um, we look at an example focusing on creating performing and producing a piece of music. Um, breaking the story into parts can be helpful, so perhaps start by thinking about the creative ideas you had. What is the piece about? Who is it for? What genre? What instrumentation will you use? And how you gathered inspiration, maybe from other artists. Um, then detail the process you followed, how you planned everything. So we'd love to see the background of your, how your mind was working when you did this, like writing the piece of music. Did you work up from a riff or samples or drum loops? Um, maybe capture performance via MIDI, uh, whatever worked best for you, and explain what tools you used, how you decided which ones to use, and even what instruments you selected. Uh, you should expand on your technical skills as well, how you use technology to record the music. Think about things like performance abilities, recording skills, things like you know microphone placement, overdubbing, managing multiple takes. Also share how you use, say, the technology tools and the applications you use to produce the final mix. You could maybe focus on things like your audio editing skills, such as importing the audio, automation, uses of plugins, mixing, mastering, and so on. And 
Finally, did you share the finished recording? Maybe describe how you did this. Another great area to consider is uh, data analytics. Uh, Rob touched on this briefly earlier. Um, working with data using tools like Excel can often be overlooked and people try to think of examples of using computers and technology, but advanced spreadsheet users can achieve very complex data analytics tasks. Um, there's now so much data available everywhere and getting to analyze it and find insights and knowledge in it is a very important skill in information technology. For example, there's a data set out there that contains information on all 802 Pokemon from all seven generations. You could investigate questions like, which generation is the strongest Pokemon? Is it possible to build a classifier to identify a legendary Pokemon? And so on. As for the music example, um, focus on explaining the steps you followed building a story. Um, some questions to answer would be things like, the problem analysis, what am I investigating? Um, are you discovering something new from the data? Maybe you're generating reports from the data that you want to share with other people to show your findings. And then think about the data gathering. Where are you going to gather the data and how? Maybe you're going to use, say, public data sets online or, or use an online survey to gather information. Maybe capturing data from a sensor, I think we mentioned earlier, like tracking sports performance. Uh, I could be screen scraping off a website, like say you were just looking at the Met Air website and grabbing the rain radar information or something. Um, and then think about the technology, what software or, or platforms are you using to do the, the analysis? Um, one massive growth area recently though is the explosion of YouTube content generators across the web. And of course, more recently, it's kind of shorter snap your cousin TikTok. And um, the process of creating, editing, and producing a video such as this could be a great idea for a submission. As before, it is a great idea to explain the steps you followed so we understand not just what you did, but why you made those decisions. Like creativity, what is the purpose of the video? What audience is it for? Is it for YouTube or TikTok? Is it a music video, a documentary, or a comedy sketch? Is it an animation, or, you know, is it, or is it real life video? Uh, the process, how did you plan the video? Did you write a script, a storyboard, a shot list? Did you need to recruit actors? And how was that interpersonal experience, you know, working with others, teamwork, facilitation we'd love to hear that interpersonal aspects as well uh, in terms of tools how did you shoot and edit the video what types of cameras did you use or might you use any different microphones or lighting what's editing software was this on your phone or on a laptop also uh, focusing on the technology video editing you know gathering your video clips maybe having to convert formats for example to import into your video editing software Things like cuts, editing, rendering. And then what quality is required? And things like aspect ratio, like TikTok, a lot of the videos are they're vertical, they're not horizontal, for example. And then finally the sharing, like how you got your video online or shared it. Um, I'm going to focus now on question two before we go into the q and um, I'm just going to share my screen now. you can see that. Um, so yeah, this is question two. Um, this is tell us about an achievement that you're particularly proud of. And we also gave you some guidelines. This is on, on, on the website and where we suggested in your answer, please tell us what did you do? Why are you proud of this achievement? What was hardest about it? And what did you learn from it? Uh, this section of the portfolio is your opportunity to express your creativity, to share examples of your drive and determination, your ability to demonstrate teamwork, working with others, and times you took the lead, and how you've learned from your past experience. Um, here are some things that would be really good to share. If what you did was unique in some way, if the task was complex, if you overcame obstacles along the way. If possible, please choose something that required independent work or motivation. And by this we mean that you did not say simply complete a school project exactly as directed by your teacher, for example, but maybe you thought of something extra to do, an enhancement to it, or something that interested you, or perhaps you're working on something that you thought of all on your own, at home or with friends. Um, here are some ideas to help get you all thinking. How you progressed within a sporting team. How you worked with a volunteer organization 
and affected people's lives. Winning or performing strongly in an event, being awarded a prize for a category or maybe overall. An artistic performance, recital or concert, gaining recognition for an achievement online or in your community. Or having say, a lead, leading role in the team to help plan a big event or initiative with a youth club, the scouts, your school, group of friends and so on. This is not an exhaustive list. There are so many more amazing things you've all done that we would love to hear about. Finally, in answering question two, and indeed the whole portfolio, it would be good to think about what we are looking for potential candidates for our immersive software engineering course. We've already shared lots of hints. For example, this quote appears in our website FAQ. The non-negotiables for a course are curiosity, an open mind to technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, organization and communication. We enjoy working in teams to solve real relevant problems. So have a good think about all these areas and how you can link your submission up to those. So thank you all for your time. I will now hand you back over to Stephen and to Sienna for the next phase of the webinar. Thanks very much, Ian. Uh, much, much appreciated. Um, I, I think uh, I think that's a really comprehensive overview of the um, course. And just to remind everyone who, if you're if you're watching, if you've got specific questions, um, just click the little button with the question mark there and uh, type in your question and, and uh, we'll answer um, uh, to the best of our abilities. And what what I'll do typically is is throw questions to um, the uh, new people or, or to JJ or Ian or Rob as necessary. OK, so the first question that's coming in and we'll try to be fast with this because our experience over the last couple of webinars is we tend to get many, many, many questions. So please just fire them in. We'll ask them, answer them as quickly as possible. So uh, here's a question for you, JJ. Um, can question one and question two be the same project? And the answer to that, Stephen, yes, they can, but they should be different aspects. So question one might focus on the design and, and um, the subsequent implementation evaluation and question two then might focus on the impact if it's in the context of community outreach or you know, a group of friends or in a home situation, etc. Very good. Um, the, the, I think the other kind of major aspect of this that is very useful is to think in terms of um, answering uh, the uh, um, answering the, the questions as faithfully as you can. You know, as, as Rob and Ian and JJ have indicated to all of you, there's um, there's a there's a very clear um, uh, um, element to all of this. Stephen, okay. could, I, could I add a comment, please? Please do, please do. Yeah, for question two, our preference would be if it was a different area. And the reason for that is if you can demonstrate excellence in multiple areas of your life, then it's likely that um, you bring that same culture, ethos, or work ethic into immersive software engineering. But if you feel that you have a significant achievement that relates to one area, yeah, you can discuss that the whole question. Okay, good. Um, so uh, another question asks points required. I presume you're, the question there, Anonymous, is how many points are, are is the course going to be? Um, the answer to that question is we don't know um, because we haven't uh, we haven't um, gone through one round of the CAO yet, um, so we're not sure. Next question um, is SolidWorks a good idea? Um, there, I'm going to throw it back again to JJ. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with SolidWorks. Um, let me look it up and so I can I can take that one. OK, so it is a 3D uh, drawing uh, system, so it's uh, CAD. It is OK. Um, it's important also what you make out of that. OK, so it is just not just having done a piece of work, but it is all the reflection around that. And that's also I mean, just to stress what JJ just said, uh, if you can basically show that you have different application domains or different uh, different projects that you worked on on in different contexts, I mean that's also important in order to uh, to give an idea of the breadth of your interest. Very good, JJ. Yeah, add, just to add, if you're using applications in the secondary school context for those Irish students or even international students in high school, then you have to be able to clearly demonstrate added value. 
So this is what we've done under, with the guidance of the teacher in their class-based classroom based assessment. Our project, this is the additional work itself that's extended that. OK, back to you, Stephen. Thank you, JJ. Um, uh, very good answer. Uh, there's a question. Um, next question is, uh, you are looking for quite a bit of hands on experience. This is one for you, Rob. You, you're looking for quite a bit of hands on experience. Is it really essential? Oh, Rob can't speak. Uh, OK, so I'll throw it to uh, Ian then, or, 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 or Titiana even. It, it, why don't you? Uh, oh, sorry, there's Rob again. Is, yeah. is it? Uh, is it essential? Here we go. Yep. Um, so hands hands on experience, I suppose with with something. I think I think as we we've deliberately tried to be as as broad as possible. So um, so it doesn't it doesn't have to be as we've said hands on experience with with programming um, because we're going to teach you a lot of, a lot of that. Um, but we do we do think it's it's beneficial and and a good a good sign. Um, for the, if you have hands-on experience with with some form of technology, I think, as I think Stephen mentioned, or maybe perhaps Tiziana earlier on, uh, it will help you figure out: is this actually a course that I want to do? Because this is, if if it's not something that you you've done or in, in even sort of uh, from in any direction, then I think you you want some some reason to think that this will be something that you'll enjoy. Brilliant. On this, I would just add maybe a little bit of the motivation why we are asking for this. Um, different from maybe your experience so far, OK, it may be the case. You're not going to be told what to do by tomorrow. OK, we are not going, you're not going to be told what to do step by step. So this is actually part of what you will have to figure out either individually or together with your team. OK, so the fact that you have already been part of an ensemble, you have given your contribution maybe more than once in more than one fields is actually a strong indicator that you are bringing actually uh, this uh, uh, this capability in whatever area. OK, before. So that's why the second question is so open actually. And uh, uh, and so that we are sure that you are going actually to fit well with the didactic, with the pedagogy of the course. Very good, Tiziana. Um, anything else to add, JJ or Ian, on this? Yeah, I, I'd like to say that it's software engineering is a people business fundamentally. So um, you're going to be working for the for the rest of your life in the profession. It's going to be in team based, agile teams, um, and you have to learn to be able to contribute, to be able to participate, and to be able to gauge the group dynamics, etc. So it's important that you know the hands-on experience where possible demonstrates that you're collaborating with with uh, with others and um, the second thing to follow on from what Tiziana was talking about there um, one of our guiding principles in immersive software engineering is studio based learning and this is where students it's problem based learning and it's peer based learning with some guidance and direction from the lecture from the faculty so and, and the portfolio is a way of demonstrating that you have an aptitude and ability to um, live in that type of setting very good uh, to excel yeah yeah, th thanks, JJ. That's very good. Um, so uh, would it this one for Ian? Would it be OK to discuss more than one project within question one or two? Um, we probably prefer if you focus more on one project, but if you have a, a few projects that you, can, you need to find a way to try and link them together. So that what you're project you're projecting to us in that portfolio and yours is unified. So we wouldn't want small pieces that are totally disconnected, but but if you can show a, a narrative that links them all together, then yes, I see no reason why not. Very good. Um, the next two questions are kind of the same. Intake, how many would start in first year? Uh, we think somewhere between 25 and 30. Um, great answer from Stephen Ryan there to Luke Harrison. The format is 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 uh, very clear. Uh, another question on a few mini, different mini projects. I think that's been answered. Uh, uh, one for you, JJ. When will I know the result of the portfolio assessment? So the links for the submission will be emailed to you. There's three uh, site, there's three points and the first one is um, middle of March and in that link we will give you dates when the results will be returned. We can't tell you accurately now because it depends on how many people submit. If we get a thousand submissions versus two thousand that will take a bit longer. Um, so at the time we will tell you when you get results. It's it will be substantially prior to the publication 
of the leaving cert results. Um, Ian, I think you have a bit of information yes. for that. Yes, if you wish, I can just share a quick slide that actually presents this. Should be able to see that there now. This is the time light, timeline, so you can see that um, it's in between weeks two and four. This is the first submission day is when you need to submit, but then you can see the gap to when the, we, we return the results back to you in the portfolio is early May. We're expecting it to take four to six weeks, but obviously we don't know how many people are going to apply. Uh, it depends on the volumes. It may take longer or shorter to, to get through all the portfolios, get the results back. So that's the reason for saying early May, early J July, and then end of July. Hopefully that answers that. Very clear, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, so that answers that question and thank you very much Stephen for 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 uh, answering Mark uh, uh, qu quite comprehensively there. Uh, so the anonymous asks, so will the portfolio submission be only the answers to the two questions or will it also require a separate portfolio of the project done as a whole? JJ. No, it, it's only pertaining to the two questions so that's what we're um, basing our evaluation upon. But for example, I, I would expect people might include links to where they have uh, some additional documentation about the actual design process or and any other aspects of the development of the portfolio. Very good. Thanks, JJ. Uh, one for you, uh, Tiziana. Seamus asks, thank you for the presentation. Very informative. How many places will be reserved for mature students? And thank you very much, Seamus, for, for your kind words. OK, so this is uh, uh, coherent with UL's policies, which are basically from the HEA, so it's for all universities. It's about 15 percent, which basically, given the intake of 25 more or less, is four positions. Uh, if uh, for whatever reason we don't have a former two students that are successful, then these positions are going to be given uh, to uh, uh, normal living cert uh, students or, or, or equivalent, which basically means international students and so on that are just coming from the uh, from the high schools. Thank you, Tiziana. Very clear. Abu Talha says, can I link a portfolio? And this is one for you, Ian, I think. Can I link a portfolio that is more of my work on my application? Um, by all means, you can put a link. It's like, for example, say uh, you had a repository of code, maybe like GitHub or something like that. But we would be concerned that um, this then doesn't become a much larger portfolio, therefore, than everyone else is submitting. So what we're actually doing by the, the size, and the, the scope, if you like, of the portfolio that we've laid out is that it gives everyone the, an equally fair chance. And also we want to see your abilities, you know, to compress down your experience into that kind of space as well and really market yourself. So. I don't know if that answers that fully, but that's very clear. Um, Ian, thank you very much. Anonymous asks, uh, Mark asks, when's the portfolio due? You've got the uh, answer there. Uh, Anonymous asks, you're asking for a lot of experience for 17 or 18 year olds that may not have had the opportunity to work on technology projects. I would see some of these examples as more of an FYP. Well, finally, your project is um, that's one of the undergraduate theses that we do here in, at the University of Limerick. And I think what we're really looking for here is is evidence of of achievement and evidence of creativity. We're not asking students to show us uh, work at the standard of an undergraduate FYP, uh, but more of an approach that has been shown. So while uh, we're looking for um, uh, breadth, if you like, rather than depth, um, I do think that uh, 17 and 18 year olds have a lot to um, show here, um, which is which uh, which is pretty clear here. Um, so uh, who's next? Who's next? Um, 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 there was a question before that was concerning the written statement. Oh yes, please, please. So I would like to pre uh, to just give a precision on this one. So for living cert students or any student equivalent coming from abroad, etc., that is coming from high school, we will have the outcome of your living certificate or the translation into Irish marks of your um, abitur, maturita, baccalaureat, whatever it is called, so to say, in your country of origin. Okay, plus just the portfolio. If you are a mature student, then we will need the, also the uh, the written statement because we have to evaluate uh, your background in a more, um, how could I say, comprehensive way. OK. That's just in order to make sure that the living cert people, you're, you're happy and, and, and fine, so to say, with the portfolio and that's it. Very good. Thank you, Tiziana. 
Um, yeah, Anonymous says you're looking for quite a bit of programming and tech experience. As we said, it's not a it's not a course necessarily in programming. That's not necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for examples of where the students have have uh, the potential students have shown um, some experience of creativity uh, and, and engagement and achievement. Uh, Sam asks, I'm thinking of applying as a mature student. I've been in the IT sector for over 20 years. I don't really have any interesting projects that I can show but I, for, but I'm as curious as any other person to use technology for human benefit. What can I add to my portfolio? I mean, I think Ian and JJ's and, 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 and Rob's presentation was very clear here, um, Sam. So I think um, I'm sure if you, if you uh, search your heart, You'll, you'll find the answer uh, 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 there. I'm sure it's there um, uh, for you. With 20 years experience, for sure, you, you've got you've got a massive amount of uh, experience to add. Uh, Alex asks, if there's very large demand for the course, will there be any possibility for the number of places being increased from 25 in year one? Uh, the answer is yes, but it won't be to 250. Uh, we need to keep the course numbers relatively small. You know, they're not going to go above 40, say something like that, simply because we need to make sure that we give these students the the, uh, the best possible experience. Um, and everything about this course is brand new, um, uh, Alex. So we need to make sure that uh, we run through the first year very much in, 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 in that um, uh, mode. Anonymous says, I want to learn from you on this course and I feel I don't have anything to put into the portfolio. However, I have a great interest technology in technology. I just don't have a project. Well, uh, two two things to, to work on there. First of all, I'm sure you do um, if, if you think more 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 broadly. And uh, secondly, you have a fair bit of uh, time from now until uh, the submission date to start working on one. So please um, uh, uh, get stuck in, you know, uh, get stuck in. Uh, yes. I think yes, on this one, on this one, I would add also, I mean, for example, we created the entire text initiative together with the people in patch um, in order to actually give again examples and give support also in the creation of projects over a, a span of four weeks. So it's not that you, you have to have worked for years on something and it is, uh, you know, the, the pinnacle of your life. The point is basically to demonstrate an attitude, demonstrate a mentality, demonstrate your engagement. OK, so don't think that the projects, they need to be such a such a monstrous thing. OK. Very good. Uh, Barry, did you have something to add? Yeah, I just I just wanted to say because I've, I've been there with this uh, a, a long time ago, trying to, you know, where to start. And I think I'm noticing from a number of the questions that it's like I don't have the project or I don't. And it's this happens all the time, not just in portfolio, but in technology and in, in, in everything, right? Because people are, you're thinking about it of, I have to have the perfect project. I think the biggest risk you can take is not starting. So what I would say to anyone who doesn't have anything, get the worst idea out, open your portfolio and say, that's it, I've started. That's the first piece of my portfolio because that's what a portfolio is. It's something you build up over time and you prune and you cultivate and you remove things over time. And eventually you will get to a place where you have something you're extremely proud of. And then it gets to a place where you're really struggling with the bits you want to take out. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people saying, oh, I don't know what to do. My 12 year old and my eight year old have portfolios. They've had them for years, right? And they work through them and on a regular basis, they prune them and they're embarrassed by their early work. And like all of us who build product for a living, you should be embarrassed by your early work. And so all I would encourage everyone to do is just uh, forget about the perfect project. Forget about question one and two. If you don't have a portfolio, start now. Start a portfolio, do something that interests you, and then prune that and prune that, and you'll be amazed because it's it's like like starting a company, right? It, it, the perfect company doesn't exist, but just start, and that's the first piece. Brilliant, Barry. Very, very good, uh, very good words. JJ, I think you've got something to add. Yeah, I, I'd like to second what Barry just said. Incredibly important that we see that here with um, undergraduate education and our students working their projects, and we get them, you know, suggest a scenario for your project and off you go and they say I can't think of anything and just put something on paper and take the and just focus on the next step forget the end goal because at this point it's you can't see it and with each step you know the light the, the, you start to see the landscape and, and eventually you will see the end point so don't be afraid at the outset if you feel like you're uh, walking in the dark 
I guarantee you that chunk of light coming down that you see, it's not a train, it's a solution. Very good, JJ, very good. Anonymous says, it seems you guys are looking for tech background people and tech nerds, which not everyone has, but may be interested. I mean, I think if, if, if we're just being clear, uh, uh, just to be 100% clear, it's not a course in programming, right? You have to learn to program. It is called immersive software engineering, but we are looking for creativity. And that's why, you know, Ian's first example there was, was about music and music production. And that's completely acceptable as a portfolio submission um, um, for for this uh, um, element. Uh, this so is, uh, maybe, a, maybe a quick analogy on that one. So to say, so if uh, imagine that you want to become an Olympic swimmer, right? What we are asking you is that you have put your feet in the water already. That's all. You're going to learn how to swim and you're going to be fast and furious. OK, <laughs> but do you like water? Are you allergic to water? OK, that's what we want to find out. That's the little initial step. Very, very clear. Thank you, Tiziana. And I, I couldn't have said it better. It's brilliant. Um, so uh, when is the final due date for the portfolio submission? I think we've answered that already. Um, I have many smaller accomplishments that involve the use of tech in a creative way, whether that's some apps and projects I made while at my local Coder Dojo or things such as setting up an NAS at home to help with digitizing physical media. But I'm having difficulty trying to choose a single project or thing I created to use in the portfolio. Is it possible to group multiple projects or achievements together or is it specifically just one? Uh, uh, Tiziana, what do you think? So you have the embarrassment of the choice. This happened a lot of times in life uh, for girls, for example, when they have to decide what to wear. OK, that's a typical thing. What do you do in those cases or what does your sister or whoever, so to say, do it in those cases? You pick up a couple of ones that you think they would suit, wear them or present them OK, to others, and then you ask for advice. You have teachers, you have friends, you have your family. OK, just, you know, pick a selection and then discuss with them why one of them is better than the others and then go with that one. Brilliant. Um, so the next question is, how will this portfolio be evaluated? Uh, this is one for uh, Ian and JJ and Rob. In fact, in, in that order, please. Um, will it be scored out of 600 and then added to the leaving cert points in the same way that art portfolios are? So Ian first. Sure, yeah, I was actually just typing a reply there at the same time. <laughs> um, so it will actually be scored out of 300, not 600. I think was at Limerick School of Art and Design of 600. That may be where you may have got that idea. So it would be, yeah, the 300 and then adding to the CAO maximum of 625. So maximum there would be 925, I believe. Very good. And uh, then JJ, do you want to say something about, you know, our approach to grading these things? Yeah, the approach is based on how well you answer the question, you know, question one and question two. So um, we are working internally at the team here on the call today in a grading rubric, but we're not going to release that, a detailed rubric to the uh, general public because then effectively people are going to follow it word for word and, uh, and um, not express themselves and do what they think we want to see. And that's not the purpose of the portfolio. So that grading rubric, uh, a lightweight or cut down condensed version of it will be made available in late January uh, for people part of the evaluation or for them to evaluate their work. But prior to that, we want you to be able to step back and use your imagination and also use your ability to reflect uh, upon uh, the, the work that you've done. Very good. Um, question, um, another question, a, a very similar uh, question, um, um, uh, is the course considered restricted given the portfolio requirement, i.e. is the CAO deadline February the 1st, uh, JJ? No, it's not because we have multiple submission points for the portfolio um, and for this particular year, we will be complying with the change of mind facility in the CAO. Very good. Um, sorry, I've lost my place. Uh, what's the next one? Um, will you publish figures? All right, yeah, Alex asks, will you publish figures on how many portfolio submissions are received? I haven't really thought about it, um, Alex. I think we'll, I, 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 uh, I think we'll think about it uh, and, and come back to you with an answer. I'm not, I'm not totally, I'm not totally sure uh, whether we can or not. So I, uh, I don't want to give you a definitive answer to a question, I'm not, uh, to a question I'm not sure about. Um, 
Uh, the next one is, if accepted this course, will the student do work experience with a company during their course? Oh yes, Anonymous, oh yes, you will. Uh, you will do five different uh, work placements that we call residencies. And the idea, and they're all paid, and they're in some of the best companies in the world, software engineering. So if you're accepted this course, you will definitely have a, an amazing um, series of work experiences. Uh, question for uh, JJ now. Once you receive the link to fill out the portfolio, how long do you have to fill it out? I think Ian, if correct me if I'm wrong, two weeks um, to uh, upload the portfolio. But we'll That's also correct. send you a, re a reminder at um, a via SMS as well at, at the time. So two weeks. Very good. Question for Tiziana now. This is from Anna. Uh, does it matter how impressive the project is for question one? As in, will more outstanding projects fare better than smaller projects that still so show similar drive or ambition? Okay, so this is again a multi, yeah, a multi um, uh, aspect uh, uh, answer, of course. I mean, if you have a bigger project or if you have something that is more um, explaining the craftsmanship that you have, that that dimension is going to be illustrated better. Okay, but as we said, there is the idea, there is impact, there is what you learned, there is your reflection, there is the execution. Okay. So there are so many aspects that go into a project that not necessarily something where you spent a lot of time coding is necessarily better than something that was very impactful, but it was a fantastic idea that you just, you know, sorted out in, you know, in two days. The seven lines of code of Stripe, for example, OK? Get that one, you get rich. Yeah, you maybe don't need the course if you do the seven lines of code, to be fair, um, but but uh, we still want you. Um, uh, I started a business that involves diagnosing and repairing hardware. I do have some other projects that involve technology that I would like to mention in the first question. Would this business be suitable in the second question? Rob, what do you think? Uh, so the, 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 the commenter started yeah. a business that involved diagnosing and repairing hardware. Does have some other projects that involve technology, more software based, and that they'd like to mention as the first question, would this business be suitable in the second question? Yes, certainly. Um, if it's something you're proud of, which it sounds like it is, then that sounds that sounds like an excellent one. Yeah, very good. I, I would I would agree um, strongly. Um, uh, one for JJ now and Ian. How can you mark the portfolios equally if there is such a big gap between the first submission option and the third submission dates? People who apply in July will have an advantage as the leaving cert will be over. Shall I take that? Please do, Judy. Please. Yeah, my, my experience in teaching going back a number of years is that people who hit the earliest submission deadline probably do better because um, they've thought more about it, um, they've uh, started work earlier, uh, and they have a clear vision of where they want to go and how to get there as quickly as possible. And particularly if you think about the leaving cert, you're going to be really busy up until late June. Um, and, and so that gives you a few weeks then if you want to hit the July submission deadline. So for those of you who are looking at um, you know, the first submission deadline, which is going to be the middle of March, that gives you the winter break or the Christmas break effectively to finalize the portfolio. So therefore, I, I don't see any benefit in aiming for a late submission in July, given the leaving certificate. Very good. Um, uh, are you expecting a lot of applications? Uh, the straight up answer is we don't know. We hope that we get hundreds of applications. Well, we could get thousands. We, we genuinely don't know. Uh, this is the first time an engineering course like this has had a portfolio like this. Um, so we, we we don't know. We, we're very hopeful that there's going to be lots and lots of demand. Um, next question. Uh, how many people are watching this right now? I don't have the statistic to hand, but I, I will uh, absolutely uh, give the statistic later. Uh, I know that we had a couple of hundred people signed up to do it. Um, I am a leaving cert. Uh, so this is one for um, for for Ian. I am a leaving cert student doing computer science. Would it be possible to use the project from the subject as my example in my portfolio? Um, well, of, of course it would be yes. But um, what you would need to do is go above and beyond the the standard answer you've given in the question because that that would be 
what was you know, kind of defined by your teacher and by the question. What you need to do really is try and expand it, show how you've th you know, thought bigger, if you like, how you've made it your own, how you may have modified it or added you know, improvements to it. So, I mean, you just need to think yourself really, how do you want to present yourself and what is the best way of kind of putting across, I hate to use the word your brand, but your, your kind of your image and what you want to sell about yourself. So going a step further, I think will always be to your advantage. Very good, thanks Ian. Uh, one for you, JJ, is there an interview as part of the selection process? Yes, um, at, at the moment we reserve the right to call uh, candidates. I don't like to use the word interview. Um, I'd call them for a chat and that would be the case where we might want to actually uh, validate the submission or we have some queries about the submission that we just want to clarify. Um, we cannot give marks for the interview slash chat because that would be unfair to those candidates who have not been called. Very good, thanks JJ. Um, does the project have to be unique? There's one for Tiziana now. Does the project have to be unique? For example, I feel maybe a few people might be doing a website. OK, so doing a website is as generic as saying I'm cooking a meal or I'm singing a song. It depends on who cooks, what kind of meal, for whom, OK, and who sings how badly or how well, OK, what kind of music in which occasion, right? So um, it's basically saying we are all writing programs in some ways, directly or indirectly, OK? So it is really the matter of you, the why and for whom and how. Very good, thank you, Tiziana. Um, one now, uh, best person to do this, maybe Rob. Would a spreadsheet on the books I've read throughout the year be fine? I feel like it doesn't cover a broad enough topic and is not impressive enough. Sorry, having some trouble with my microphone. Um, I'd, I'd say it's a spreadsheet that is just listing the the books that you read is probably not not hugely uh, not not hugely sort of in, interesting on its own. Um, but if you had if you took that some step further, like uh, perhaps combined it with data on, I, I'm coming up with this off the top of my head, combined it with data of reviews from the internet somehow or cro like cross-reference them with your friends or try to predict other books that you might like on the basis of the ones that you'd read and rated, then I think that that starts to become more sort of uh, detailed and interesting. So on its own, just a list, I think probably not, um, but it's certainly that could be the basis for something uh, quite suitable. Very good. Thanks, Rob. Um, not sure if my question is coming through. My question is, if accepted in this course, will the student do work experience with a company during the course? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, there are five different um, paid placements we call residencies. Um, there's a lot of detail on that on the, the websites and you can you can work in more than um, 40 or 50 companies now. Mark says, um, uh, and here I'm, uh, Tiziana, maybe you can answer this one. I have a pretty basic project made in Python. That's not very impressive right now, but I have a lot of really cool ideas I want to add. I won't be able to do those before the due date because leaving certain projects are my top priority right now. Would I get marks for talking about my future plans for the project? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> so the point is that you have to have achieved something. OK, you're talking about who you are at the moment of submitting. And I mean, we all have plans. We all have fantastic ideas for the future, but then how do you assess the plans that are not there in comparison with the things that are there by others or the things that are not there by others? OK, so it's already complicated enough if we just stay with what has been achieved. My suggestion would be to work a little bit, OK, between now and the submission time on your currently not so impressive project in order to improve it and, uh, uh, you know, this way improve your chances of being selected. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And I also add that maybe your project is more impressive than you think. You know, uh, I think as you know, I, I, I do. I do think we've got a lot of self deprecating people on, on this call. I have no ideas and I have no projects. And my Python is, you know, I only built I only built the one operating system, you know, this kind of stuff like just uh, do your best. Let, let, let us uh, figure it out. Uh, one for you, Ian. Can you include images and graphics in the portfolio? Yes, there's no reason why you could not include uh, images yeah. that say illustrate what you're doing. Um, just to make sure you don't make it too big then. Yeah, I suppose exactly. in a way that the constraints of the portfolio 
it's like if, if you're asked to do a five minute pre presentation, you turn up and talk for 15 minutes, people will go, oh, they didn't quite get the get the drift of what we're asking for there. So yeah, make sure you don't make it too expansive. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm on a webinar. I'll come down to you in just two minutes. Thanks, love. That's my daughter and her tooth fell out. Yes. Okay, so we will. Uh, We'll sort that situation out once the webinar's finished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd seen everything, folks, with uh, webinars. I really, really did. But uh, yeah, teeth, teeth falling out. Right. Um, <laughs> where are we now? <laughs> if I enter a portfolio before February, can we reapply in the change of mind phase? One for you, uh, JJ. There. No, because we will have graded it by um, with, with the first submission. So um, the answer there is no. Very good. Um, <clears throat> uh, will there be a follow up interview after the portfolio? Yeah, JJ has already answered that. It, it'll be more of a chat uh, and it's at, our, it's at our discretion and it, it's not graded. Will the submission be anonymous, Ian? Uh, well, no, it, it will not be anonymous because we have to be able to get back to you. So. Very good. Uh, is there a pass fail grade for the portfolio? It is vital that students know ahead of the July the 1st change of mind deadline whether they have a realistic chance of getting a place. Uh, Tatiana. Yeah, the problem is that even if we gave you your uh, feedback, so to say, on the portfolio, uh, this goes uh, together with uh, with the listing and with the selection, so to say, of the CAO grades, and we will not know that. So that's a, that's a problem. I mean, it, that that's the situation for all the courses. We don't know as course directors. We don't know actually how many students we are going to get and which students we are going to get until very late because the decision is taken by the university. Thank you, Tiziana. Um, Keith asked, "What do I do if my daughter's tooth fell out?" <laughs> Good question, Keith. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, could you explain briefly how the application process works for an international student? Um, uh, who's best for that? Actually, maybe Tatiana again, actually. I think it is exactly like everybody else. You are going to apply for uh, through the CAO. OK, uh, just the, with the deadlines that are that are uh, typical for you and you are going to be in one of the three windows uh, that we have foreseen. I don't see any problem with uh, with uh, being international student. Very good. Uh, Stephen, did you want to add something? Uh, yeah, just I suppose that that's very much dependent on whether you mean by international student, whether you're coming from the EU or whether you're coming from outside of the EU. If you are applying from outside the EU, you'd be applying directly uh, through UL Global. OK. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Stephen. I uh, much appreciated for that clarification. Um, uh, Anonymous asks, and this is one for uh, you, JJ. If I enter a portfolio before February, can I reapply in the change of mind phase? Actually, I think we answered this one, didn't we? we did. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. OK, very, very good. Uh, are you aiming for a gender mix? Um, so the uh, answer is here that we would very much like to see a gender mix, but not just of gender. Uh, we, we are very strongly committed to equality, diversity and inclusion. Um, but of course, the CAO uh, pro process uh, is very much gender blind, um, um, at least at, at its uh, top level. And so we, uh, we we will simply select for the people who have the highest uh, highest marks uh, in this area. But we will be announcing a range of um, uh, measures to uh, strongly encourage EDI applicants, and that includes uh, everybody from um, from um, um, different backgrounds, uh, from from different genders, different ethnicities. Um, Etc. And I think that the that'll be coming out. We'll be announcing that in the in the early new year um, for sure. OK, um, so what's next? What's next? What's next? Uh, am I allowed to submit a project that was group work? I have a project that I committed with another friend that we split the work between us. Is this a valid option? The answer is no. You have to submit your own work because you're the one who's being um, um, assessed. So we won't be able to understand which bits were you and which bits were your 
which bit where your where your colleague <laughs> somebody wants to call the tooth fairy if it if a tooth falls out. Maybe one of the ISE applicants can come up with an app where uh, uh, my daughter can sell her um, errant tooth uh, to uh, to uh, international tooth fairies. OK, um, if you did a project with coding involved in it, uh, one for you, um, uh, uh, Rob, if you did a project with coding involved in it, would you need to include screenshots of the code in your portfolio? Uh, that that would be one way to do it. Uh, I think if uh, you can look also look into various online hosting um, code hosting so, uh, products. So there's one there's one popular one called GitHub. Uh, there's also some called Bitbucket and things like that. And then that that would allow you to upload your code to there and just include a link to uh, to it. And that's probably an easier way for us to read it. And it means you can include all of your code, all of the files in it. So I'd suggest that that's how you include code. Very good. Uh, Anna asks, uh, can you give an estimate on what you expect the points requirement for the course to be and what you hope, when do you hope to release the actual points requirement? So the answer here, Anna, is we simply don't know. If, um, if, if five people with 300 points show up um, for, 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 uh, for the course, um, that's what the course uh, points will be. If, if 50 people with 600 points show up, that's what the course points are going to be. The court points are developed, are, are discovered by, a, 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 if you like, supply and demand. Um, um, so yeah, we, we, we don't know that. We do know uh, that we have this portfolio requirement and we also have a series of minimum entry criteria, particularly around um, uh, mathematics. So please pay uh, attention to that because that really does matter and it does communicate um, um, very uh, strongly. Um, one for you now, uh, Tiziana. It seems that a coded project would be preferred. What about turning a document into a website? Yeah, it depends on the, what document, which website, how, etc. So it is again going back to the same uh, to the same discussion before. It is a project that it leaves uh, out of many dimensions of excellence. OK, and so if you score high on uh, all of them, except maybe the, uh, the heavy technicality, that's fine. Very good, thank you. Um, the, another question, as Leaving Cert, Cert students don't have to submit a written statement, can we attach a document talking about us, who we are and our background? Um, so no is the answer uh, to, to that. Um, now, you do have to submit a written statement in the sense that the, the submission is obviously you know, written. Um, and so that's uh, that's uh, uh, very good. Um, so, you know, of course, uh, please feel free to write there. Um, Many courses that have a portfolio interview extra submission do have a minimum pass grade, e.g. HPAT, um, um, Shannon College of Hotel Management. So the students know by July the 1st that they are in the running for the course. Am I correct in that a student could have a very poor portfolio and still get a place on the course with a better leaving cert? Um, that's one for, I guess, JJ. It's quite a complex one. So I think we, if we just take a second to read that, because there's a lot going on in that sentence. Yeah, so a few points. No, number one, you will know your uh, portfolio marks prior to the publication of the Leaving Cert. Um, and Ian showed a slide with the three uh, submission points and our um, envisaged uh, return of results dates. But again, that depends on number of applicants. Um, the second point, and this has cropped up a number of times um, with respect to setting of the points, we have nothing to do with that. It's demand and supply. So we say we're going to supply 25 seats in immersive software engineering and the points are going to be set by the CAO based on the demand. If there's, as Stephen said, if there are 10 students versus a 1,000 students applying, that has an impact on the points. And um, yeah, the third, the third part of that question was, could I in theory do bad, uh, hypothetical, I don't do so well in the portfolio, but do very well at the leaving cert? Um, what's the likely outcome of that? Um, well, truthfully, since we can't predict points, we're not in a position to tell you, but I, I would suspect that you'll be in the running. But again, I'm just having a guesstimate there. 
Yeah, great answer, JJ. Uh, there's another question. Is there a portfolio workshop or advanced evaluation portfolio day whereby students could provisionally submit the portfolio but then get advice on what to improve, etc.? I know we're going to do a number of portfolio uh, events um, in the new in the new year, and they mightn't have exactly that framework whereby somebody submits something and then we we give you feedback, but we'll certainly um, be evolving this into the uh, into the future. Um, following on from before, there's another question. If I were to label the files completed by me, but also include the entire group project, would this be allowed? It's a tricky one. JJ, what do you think? Yeah, um, it's really tricky. Yeah. And we haven't yet arrived at a final decision on this, um, and we will notify people uh, later on. But our collective thinking is, as as I think Stephen, you said earlier, there is a problem with group based projects and that it's very difficult for us to assess the individual's contribution in, in that. Um, if you if you as an applicant feel confident that your contribution it was a standalone contribution but within the context of a overall group based project and you're able to adequately describe that and do so with confidence and expertise then i think steve tiziana and the rest of the team that we'd have to consider but again this is an in-house discussion and we we will notify you once we've arrived at our final decision very good thanks jj tiziana anything to add yeah, so I've been on committees where um, I mean we have the same problem with, with uh, uh, papers with many authors, right? And then people have to declare how much percent was their own contribution. I've been on committees where three different authors of the same papers were declaring that uh, they had 80% of what was there. That doesn't work. So there is a really a difficulty, so to say, of assessing what is the agreement of everybody, okay? Uh, with for what concerns the, the individual contributions. So if you have any chance of finding something that is not a group, group project, please take that opportunity, OK, and just do something individual. Very good. Thank you, Tiziana. All right, final question now because we've got only got two minutes left. Will I immediately receive for, for you, uh, Ian? Will I immediately receive the link for the portfolio after the February CAO deadline or will there be a delay? There will actually be a delay of, of around a month because there's a change of mind facility, I think, from the 5th of March through to the end of March. And that the link will actually be emailed to applicants the second week in March. Uh, Stephen Ryan, you may want, I don't, you can confirm that for me, but I believe that's what's correct. Um, just my understanding is that if uh, your CAO application is submitted by the 1st of February, the link will be emailed in early February. Um, and if the CAO application is submitted after the 1st of February and up to the 1st of May, it will be emailed in early May. That's my understanding of it. OK, very good. Um, thanks, Stephen. Is there another gateway into the course other than CAO, as in transferring from another course? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, you have to apply uh, straight through, um, through the uh, uh, system as a whole. Um, and this is going to be the final question now because I, I promise to be very respectful of everyone's time um, in, throughout all of these. Um, what is your expected number of applicants? And the answer is we don't know. Uh, we, we, we hope for many. We, we hope for uh, uh, the best possible candidates in, in, around Ireland, but also um, from around the world. Um, and so we will uh, we will do our best to uh, m uh, make our way through what is a brand new course with a brand new uh, set of um, ideas um, pushing this all of this forward. Um, so with that, it's now 5.30. So what I'd like to do is if, if, if any of my colleagues have questions or comments that they'd like to uh, to uh, finish off with, I, I, or, or, or if uh, Barry or Rob have some con some contribution that they'd like to make just, just in signing off, um, please do uh, let me know. Barry. I'll keep it brief, Stephen, but I, I would just say, to anyone still listening, see this as an opportunity, not as a stumbling block, right? This is an opportunity to show more of you to be about more than just the points. I was one of those people going back to an earlier question. My portfolio when I went to go to art college 25 years ago was the weaker part. My leaving cert was the stronger part. And what it leads to is a, a, a more diverse pool of people uh, in the course 
at the at, at, at the end of all of this. So what you want is the mix of academia and the mix of creativity and the mix of people who've who've done all the different things. And this is an opportunity to showcase some of that and and don't get too hung up on it. Just just enjoy it because it's it's just the beginning of a process. It's it's to get you started on an, an incredible portfolio that you'll have coming out of this course. That's when it's really going to be a rock star portfolio. Um, but he, he, he just just get started. That would be my advice. Very good. Um, anything else to add, colleagues, before we finish up? No? Wonderful. Uh, can I thank everyone for their time and attention? Can I particularly thank uh, Rob uh, Heaton, uh, Barry Lunn and uh, Stephen Ryan for uh, for 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 attending today and just making it uh, better. And of course, uh, uh, you, the, the viewer, it's been a really interesting uh, uh, time. Um, I know what I'm doing next. <laughs> which is uh, finding a home for an errant tooth. Um, but I, I hope you have a fantastic uh, Saturday afternoon. And if you have more questions that we didn't get to, we will respond to you and we will find a way to uh, get, get back to you. If you just send an email to ise at ul.ie, we will um, we'll make sure that every question you have uh, is, is answered um, um, by us uh, in a timely fashion. So thanks and uh, have a great Saturday. Cheers. Bye. See you soon again.